So, hey everyone, let's try out a quick demo of how to, you know, use Grasshopper and Speckle to create a multi-user workflow. Some sort of like design by multiplayer exercise. I'm going to start by creating a new stream. I'm just going to call it like quick demo, give it a, whoops, a description. And I'm going to hit create. So there we go. Once we have our new stream, what we need to do is simply just copy paste the URL and send the data that we want to to this URL. Now I have a couple of pre-made Grasshopper definitions, a couple with some Rhino files just for the sake of it. And let's start. So this Grasshopper definition doesn't do much. It just extrudes a funky shape out of a double curved surface. Um, so let's send this one. Let's send this one out. So to do that, I'm first going to create a grasshopper sender. And you can see this guy has three inputs. D, the data that I want to send. S, which is where I want to send it. And M, which is like any messages that I'd like to add or attach to this commit. D is for data. And I'm going to paste in the stream URL. I'm just going to send it here. And now I can already click send. Click send. Bam, and as you notice, we already have a notification in the front end. Let's check this data out. Wow, spectacular. Now, by default, uh, Speckle 2 senders and receivers are kind of manual send. So if you want to send automatically, you need to right click and say send automatically. What this means is that every time you change this data, you know, stuff is going to be sent. So. <laughs> We found that this is quite a wasteful workflow, so I think the best way to do it is actually to manually send. And the cleanest way is also to add a bit of a commit message so that <clears throat> others can know or understand what you've been up to. So right now I'm just going to say moved surface back up. And I'm going to move the surface back up and hit send. <clears throat> Great, so you can see now in my in my branch, in my sorry, in my commit message, I have this thing called move surface backup. If I go to all the, to my branch where all the commits are stored, essentially you can see the history of all the data that I've sent. <clears throat> right, now let's say I want to receive this and section it into some floor plates or something. So I we're gonna go here to so-called Alice's computer and essentially create a receiver. And again, to receive data, it's quite easy. All you need to do is like copy, if you want to receive the data from a specific commit, you can just copy paste the commit URL. So this one here, and this will essentially ensure that you're not going to get any other data other than that one. When you first receive data that's been structured, so essentially here you can see that we've structured it into a solid and a top surface you once you receive you will get nothing so what you need to do is say expand speckle object uh, make sure to choose the second version of the component and then you can see here that i've got the solid which is this guy and i've also got just the top geometry which is this top surface sorry which is this we're going to use that later down the line in actually creating a um a some sort of finalization on top of it. So in this case, we're interested in the solid, so I'm just going to plop it in here. And voila, I've just created some wonderful section planes. Um, the nice thing is now that if I change the original surface, so let me just pop on the control points for this. Uh, and I drag this corner down. I can say here, uh, edited surface commit changes, send, you will notice that this one doesn't react. Why is that? It's because it's locked into a specific commit. So if you actually want to receive updates, what you need to do is essentially receive straight away from the stream itself or from a specific branch, more on that later. So if I do this and I click receive, what you do get now is essentially the latest commit in this specific stream, which in, in this case, it's also pertaining to the main branch. So there you go. If I would, that's just for the purposes of this demo, so I said just receive automatically, and in here I'm going to click send automatically. So now if we're having fun and just doing this, 
around, you should be able to see that actually this is changing as well, you know, like, whoops. And you can start having as much fun as you want. So this should work as well, hopefully. There you go. Wow. Um, great. So that's essentially how you send data and receive data through Speckle. It's quite easy. Let's also, and you'll notice here, like if I would be actually here, I will see edit surface. Now let's send these floor slabs specifically. I'm just going to close the preview of this. So let's just send these floor slabs to the same stream, but in a new branch, right? And I'll call this branch, I'll give it a different name, maybe something like structure or yeah, basic structure. So what I've did now is like I created a new branch, which will hold subsequent commits. How to send to a branch, it's again very easy. You can just right click and copy the link address. The point is like you need to send when you put, you need to just copy the URL and oop, uh, paste it in a panel in Grasshopper, create a sender, connect the data you want to send, and this. This will basically, this specific URL now will essentially tell Speckle like, okay, now whatever commits you create from here, you'll need to send them to this specific branch, right? So, um, and voila, we've got our, our floor slabs. Right, let's give them a bit of a thickness because just for the sake of making them like show up a bit better in the online viewer, 0 0.2. Just plug these in, send. Uh, okay, let's check it out. Does it actually look better? Yeah, it does look better. I think this edge gives it a bit of a, of a nice visibility. There we go. So that's that. Now I said also I've got prepared here like a bit of a very cheesy exercise ultimately in which what I want to do on Robin's computer, so to say, is essentially receive the top surface. So it's pretty much just this one and analyze it in some sort of funky way just to, you know, the purposes of this demo. So what I'm going to do, it's again, I assume that essentially, uh, all kind of, let's say, the conceptual volume of this building is going to be always on the main branch. So what I can do is I can just copy this and paste it here and plug this into a receiver. Bam. And just get the data out, click receive. And voila, now my script is actually running. So I'm going to leave this one also on receive automatically just for the sake of it just to show you how that actually, you know, if I move this up, you know, this one's going to send and these two are going to receive automatically data that you have just modified. Um, of course, you can also do this and it's preferable to do so actually with uh, manual updates just because it provides more meaning to the changes that you've made. Otherwise, you know, every time you fiddle a slider in Grasshopper, stuff can change and that's like, can be quite, confusing so to say so i'm just like editing this guy just uh again just ultimately having a bit of fun <laughs> with grasshopper um great stuff so now you can see in here i've generated a bunch of cells scaled them down lofted them and created some sort of basic columns to support this structure up and i can send these again uh should i send them to the same branch now you know what i'll do i'm going to send them to essentially a new branch. So I'll go back to the online UI branches, I'm gonna create a new branch. I'll call this um, whatever columns and roof, right? Go into columns and roof, copy paste the URL, go back to this Rhino file, paste the URL into a text panel, hit send. Uh, I wanna send here and what do I wanna send? I wanna send these guys. And I also want to send these guys, right? So you, you can also just plug them in like this. You don't need to structure data, right? And now, of course, we still are working a bit on <laughs> our progress reporting, so to say. But there you go. It's done. Notification is up. Click C. Let's load the data up. And just so you guys know, like, this is actually using a real live Speckle server. So all this data is going essentially all the way up to DigitalOcean somewhere in the outskirts of London. 
I'm coming back down to my computer every time I do this. Now that I'm looking at this, I actually noticed that I forgot to send the lines that are keeping these columns up. So um, where are those lines? Are they here? Well, I'm, so I'll just add these guys in. Uh, are they all? Yeah, hopefully, yes. Send. So essentially now I've got a bit of a wonky, <laughs> quite wonky roof. And uh, let's just say I want to bring these back. So let's say I, my name is Bob, and I've generated a conceptual surface, and now I want to see like what the others made out of it. So how did they kind of, what did they create? How did they, how did this building shape up further down the line in the process? Um, to do so, I can just receive again. So I can essentially receive from the two branches I've created in these two uh, separate Rhino files and receive this data back in. So what I'm gonna do is just copy paste this one, which is the structure branch. Oops, so I copy paste it here and then hit receive. Whoop. There you go. Ah, this one didn't update. So I'll need to click send. So see, this one, it was not sending automatically. So now I have to click send here. And once it's sent, a little bubble will show up that, hey, there's new commits available for this branch. So I just need to hit receive. And voila, I've got, um, I've got the floor slabs coming in, right? Now, next up, I also want to pull down the structure and roof. So just copy paste that. Whoops. Sorry, I think I just copy pasted the panel. So that. Plop it into a receive node and hit receive. So this is the roof. And once this is done, theoretically, if all goes well, we should be able to see these funky hexagons on the of the building. Voila, there we go. So these are these, this is the structure, these are my, my panels. Uh, and this is quite cool because ultimately it allows you to kind of organically create workflows around multiple stakeholders, people, designers, team members in a quite easy and structured way. Um, the last thing that I want to show you is basically, okay, so I've got all this data, right? I've sent it around in between like three grasshopper files now. Let's just say I want to like have it back into one place. So this is where we get asked like, how do I merge data in Speckle? Well, quite easily. Essentially what you need to do is receive the data that you want to merge Right, so here, these two. Let's say I want to now marry the structure and the floor slabs into one ultimate release that can go further down the line to the structural engineer, so to say. So what I can do is essentially, once I've received this data, I can send it back out to this stream, and I'll just create a new branch in here uh, called releases, so to say. And this is a branch that, let's say, I'm gonna keep a bit more clean and careful, right? So I will try and not leave any kind of um, <clears throat> empty comment messages and so on and so forth. So here, like I've got my floor slabs and I've got my my structure, my columns, my hexagons. I could just plop them in for the sake of this demo. This should be enough. I'm gonna hit send. And once it's through, I should get a notification in here and then we can view both of them together at the same time. There we go, see. View data, bam. And uh, that was quite easy and fast. As you can see, I obviously said, I'm gonna keep my release branch clean, right? I obviously didn't. I just left the default commit message in there. It's not really helpful, but I can edit a commit message. So instead of here, like if you forget, right, you can just come back and say, like, this is preli oops, preliminary concept design architecture, right? And click save and that's it. And now whenever you want to reference something back to a specific, you want to go back in, in, a, in a specific point in time, you have a, a given commit. Right, what's nice, it, it's also nice, like, I mean, there's other funky stuff. So let's say maybe you want to focus just on the structure or you want to, for example, receive just a one floor slab, right? Um, and then play around with it in Grasshopper, specifically just with that floor slab. 
Um, what's cool, what we allow you to do now is essentially, I have no idea, is to receive kind of individual objects, right? So this is one individual column from that commit. Um, so what you can do is like dig down in here. Oops, sorry, I dug too much down. And you can essentially see and specifically get one specific object out. Now, the columns are a bit boring. And as you can see, I haven't structured data inside this commit in any kind of intelligible way, which is a bit stupid of me because I've just sent it here. But that's fine because um, I can always create a new commit, right? So these are my columns and rows, and these are my floor slabs. So let's just invent something now here. I'm just going to uh, let's measure the list of the length, the whoops, the length of this list, right? I've got 13. OK, and just create a set of numbers going from 0 to 12. That's all right. And concatenate this with level underscore. Right, so what I'm getting now is a little set of keys, level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12. Uh, great, and now if I go to speckle 2. <laughs> we have a extra component, which is like, um, uh, uh, sorry, create speckle object by key and value. So what I can do is like specify a set of keys and a set of values. So my keys will be these and my values will be these. And that's it. It created one nice speckle object. If I expand this speckle object, this is when you can actually see what I've actually made. So essentially, each prep is now into under one specific key. So each floor slab is under one specific key. And why is this cool? Because if I send this through, and I go here, click view, if I will expand the data that's in my list, you will see that actually like all these preps are now kind of stored in a structured manner, right? Uh, and obviously you can do this in any way you see fit. So there's no limitations coming from Speckle's end on how you structure this. If you want to use something like an IFC standard, you're more than welcome to do so. Or if you want to just create your own data structures, whatever makes sense for you. Uh, that's perfect, right? So now I want to essentially receive this specific object. This specific object contains all the other objects inside. So I'm just going to copy paste this object URL in. I'm just going to do it in here. Let's just pretend that I'm, pardon, receiving stuff. Uh, in I need to coordinate the floor slabs together with the roof structure. So I've clicked receive. The data is actually received. You don't see anything because you need to expand it to actually see what's inside. So I'm going to go ahead and expand the speckle object. And bam, voila, I have essentially the structure which I've created here in here. And basically, that's it. That's speckle multiplayer. It's fun and games. And in the same way, you can also like use straight away the Rhino plugin, or you can see this data is maybe coming from Revit or Rhino or going to Dynamo or whatever. That's, um, so that's that. That's a quick demo of Speckle, mostly focused around multiplayer grasshopper stuff.